good evening students today we are going to continue the last session which is nothing but the pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor okay so in the last session we defined some terminologies like uh, act to low signal and act to high signal and high impedance state or the uh, what uh, the tri state mode high impedance state and the tri state mode so in the today's class we are going to see the definitions of means what is the functionality of each and every pin in 8086 microprocessor so what you do is just uh, pause the video and uh, try to note down uh, the pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor you can call the pins are well settled yeah pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor okay mm. okay let's go for the explanation of pin diagram so as we know that the 8086 microprocessor is a 40 pin ic out of 40 pins out of 40 pins uh, 20 pins are acting as a address lines and uh, in those 20 pins uh, 16 lines are acting as a data lines. So let us see one by one. So here the first thing uh, Whenever we are taking one IC we require the power supply to that particular IC and as we know that the uh, Microprocessor or uh, any IC is going to be designed uh, with the help of the uh, digital electronics So obviously most of the ICs are requiring the uh, clock signals to get the functionality from those particular ICs from that particular IC from a particular IC if you want to get the functionality we are supposed to provide the uh, required amount of clock signals okay so here the 8086 microprocessor as we know that the 8086 microprocessor is a uh, digital electronics one it means it is a uh, designed with the help of the digital electronics so it requires the two ground signals means power supply signals pin number one pin number 20 are the ground signals and uh, pin number 40 is a plus vcc means plus 5 volts of uh, power supply we are supposed to apply and in order to get the functionality from this one we are supposed to connect the required amount of clock signals to the 8086 microprocessor which is around the 5 megahertz range okay so here we are having the clock signals we are supposed to provide the clock signal to the uh, pin number 19 of the 8086 microprocessor with the help of the crystal oscillator or some other clock generators we are having the clock generators also with the help of the clock generators we, we are able to provide the clock signals to the 8086 microprocessor okay so this is about uh, the pin number 120 as we are seeing on the screen pin number 1 and 20 are the ground signals and 40th pin is a VCC and the 19th pin as we are expecting the functionality from the 8086 microprocessor and as we know that the 8086 microprocessor is designed using the digital electronic components so that's why it is expecting the clock signals we are supposed to provide the clock signals uh, we may provide the clock signals to the 8086 microprocessor with the help of the crystal oscillators or with the help of the uh, what the clock generators uh, the clock generator topic we have a separate topic on the clock generator we'll see as we move on okay now. So the next case is uh, let us go for the uh, address and the data lines sima as uh, i defined in the last class that we are having the multiplexed lines multiplex means when we are having a particular pin if that particular pin is having the multiple functionality then we call that particular pin as a multiplexed pin so if you see this one it means not only the one uh, i'm just taking only one but the same explanation is going to be applicable to the rest of the address and data lines so here AD50 is uh, having the dual functionality means sometimes it is acting as a address line sometimes it is acting as a data line okay no? sometimes it is acting as a address line sometimes it is acting as a data line now the question comes that at what time this line is acting as a address line is a question so when you are taking the clock signals actually so we are having the means uh, before the clock signals let us uh, come for what kind of operations can be performed by the 806 microprocessor or any kind of microprocessor one is a opcode fetching operation, memory read operation, memory write operation, IO read operation, IO write operation. These are the five types of operations which are going to be done by the 8086 microprocessor. One is the opcode fetching operation, memory read operation, memory write operation, IO read operation, IO write operation. Okay, IO read operation and the IO write operation. Now the thing is when you are taking a particular operation when a micro when a particular microprocessor is performing a particular operation that means in one of these five okay in one of these five it re, it is requiring some clock signals okay so that's the that uh, uh, cycle is called as a mesh cycle okay so depending on the type of the operation few operations are expecting the four mesh cycles few operations are expecting the uh, six mesh cycles like that okay we are having the instruction cycle all those things as we move on we are going to see the definitions of each and everything uh, once we come across the uh, system components con uh, concept in the first unit 
so at the end of that uh, end of the first unit we are going to see that one but before that just remember that we require the some delay okay now that delay is called as a mission cycles so in that mission cycles we are having the t0 or means we are having the naming conventions t0 uh, which is a uh, let me take this one so no need to give this much of explanation but for your convenience i am giving we are having the time 0 time 1 means clock cycles these are the clock cycles time 2 clock cycle time 3 okay so we are having the four clock cycles starting from the t0 to t1 or uh, t3 during the t0 clock cycles see this clock cycles period we are going to see that one during the system components concept uh, but but before that you just remember one thing so so means for a particular operation we require the four clock cycles actually so let us suppose it is a memory read operation memory read operation requires a four clock cycles up code fetch operation depends on the type of the instruction we are having the up code fetch operation uh, that may take uh, takes the six mission cycles or that may take uh, that may uh, six clock cycles okay now. So one mission cycle is nothing but the total delay which is going to be taken by the microprocessor to perform a, con a particular operation. So in this particular mission cycle, how many clock cycles are there? Four clock cycles are there. Four clock cycles are there. Okay. Now. So here uh, in the memory read, memory write, ever read, ever write operation means in the read write operations, memory read, memory write operation, we require the one mission cycle and in that mission cycles we are having the four clock cycles in that mission cycle we are having the four clock cycles if you are taking the up code fetch operation if you are taking the up code fetch operation for that also we require some delay so that one is also called as a mission cycle but that one requires the uh, not uh, it is not going to be uh, the four clock cycles actually it is going to be the six clock cycles depending on the instruction the number of clock cycles which are going to be <coughs> used by the 8086 microprocessor that is changing for the output fetching operation for the output fetching operation that depends on the size of the instruction whether it is a one byte instruction two byte instruction three byte instruction like that it depends on the size of the instruction also so at that time the clock cycles are going to be changes okay forget about all those things if you are getting confused just leave it but uh, what are the t0 to t3 means they are the clock cycles which are going to be taken by the microprocessor to perform a particular operation and that uh, entire this uh, entire t0 to t3 uh, is called as a, a delay clock delay so this delay is called as a mission cycle this delay is called as a mission cycle just remember that one so here as i said this particular not only this line the, these lines also whatever these lines we are having these are the multiplex lines multiplex lines means they are have they are acting as a address lines as well as a data lines they are acting as the address lines as well as the data lines now the question comes that at what time these lines are acting as a address lines at what time these lines are acting as a address lines when you are taking a particular mission cycle as i said we are have a mission cycle means it is a group of clock cycles so here i am just taking the memory read, read operation for the memory write also same concept for uh, memory read operation at that time it requires when the microprocessor trying to perform the read operation it requires a four clock cycles now out of four clock cycles during the first clock cycle during the t0 clock cycle during the t0 clock cycle these lines are acting as a address lines whatever the multiplex lines we are having these lines are acting as a address lines these lines are acting as a address lines soon after the t0 is over from the t1 onwards from the t1 to t3 in the read operation output fetching operation means it may be the t6 okay now don't get confused so from t1 to t3 these lines are acting as a data lines means during the t0 period during the t0 they are acting as a address lines okay now address lines and during the means from the t1 to t3 these lines are acting as a data lines these lines are acting as a data lines okay now, one is address lines another one is a data lines okay right now the question comes that who is going to differentiate who is going to differentiate uh, whether these lines are acting as address lines or the data lines whether these lines are acting as a address lines or the data lines so these are the multiplex lines now multiplex lines means assigning the multiple functionality to the same pins okay now this line is called as a multiplex line means i'm assigning the address line functionality as well as the data lines functionality so that's why it is called as a multiplexed line in order to demultiplex the multiplex lines means in order to get a particular functionality from a particular line whether they are acting as the address lines or the data lines in order to demultiplex the multiplex lines we require the selection line we require the selection line means it is just like a two cross one multiplexer it is just like a two cross one multiplexer okay so two cross one means 
sorry it is just like a 2 cross 1 multiplexer means i am having the two inputs i am having the two inputs and i am having the one output right i am having the two inputs and i am having the one output this is one output right so sometimes this line means i am having the dual functionality now so same pin i am just defining this pin is having the address lines as well as the data line now so i am just taking this one as a what i am doing is it is the address line okay now ADD. this line is acting as a address line which line this arrow is acting as a address line now what i am going to do i am going to assign the same functionality means uh, to uh, some other functionality to the same thing now so it is a data lines okay now when this line is acting as a address line when this line is acting as a data line so as i said it is a 2 cross 1 multiplexer na as i said it is a 2 cross 1 multiplexer na means two inputs one output is there it is a 2 cross 1 multiplexer 2 cross 1 multiplexer right so for the 2 cross 1 multiplexer how many uh, selection lines we have how many selection lines we have only one selection line so means whether this particular line whether this particular line so i am having only one line but this line is having the two functionalities one is the address lines as well as the data lines one is the address line as well as the data lines at what time these lines uh, this line is acting as the address line at what time this line is acting as a data line that purely depends on which signal you are transmitting at the output which signal you are transmitting at the output so means selecting whether the, it is acting as the address lines or the data lines that purely depends on the one pin called as a ale pin one pin called as a ale pin which is called as a address latch enabled pin which is called as a address latch enable pin address latch enable pin is a one so as i said it is a multiplex line na? these lines are the multiplex lines na? these lines are the multiplex lines to demultiplex the multiplexer lines multiplex line means having the multiple functionalities in order to demultiplex in order to get one functionality among the multiple in order to get one functionality one particular functionality among the multiple we are supposed to have the demultiplexing line or i can say that it is a selection line okay now. so in order to differentiate whether they are acting as the address lines or the data lines a is the one which is taking that responsibility now the a is acting as a selection line if the a is equals to the one if the a equals to the one if a equals to sorry i think uh, the my photograph is uh, uh, suppressing this a a is nothing but address latch enable i am just rewriting that one don't get confused ale is nothing but address slash enable uh, uh, i hope uh, this one this uh, one is blocking my my video is blocking this terminology so ale is nothing but address latch enable pin if this particular ale if this particular ale is equals to the one if this particular ale status available in the 8086 microprocessor is equals to the one then these lines are driven as an output lines means now these lines are acting as a address lines now these lines are acting as a address lines means if the ale pin equals to the one then this particular two cross one multiplexer is there now it is selecting the address lines now whatever the multiplexer operation is there to over here these lines are acting as a address lines now okay now these lines are acting as a address lines now. okay if at all the ale is equals to the zero if the ale is equals to the zero if the ale status is equals to the zero then these lines are acting as a data lines means we are applying the uh, this is a selection line for the two cross one now when we are applying the ale equals to the zero then these data lines are going to be acting as an output lines means the multiplex lines are acting as a data lines multiplex lines are acting as a data lines multiplex lines are acting as a data lines okay now so multiplex means having the multiple functionality to a particular pin how many number of pins are having the multiple multiple functionality those pins are called as the multiplexer pins or multiplexer lines or multiplexer signals in order to demultiplex demultiplex means choosing one option even though we have the multiple uh, operations choosing only one operation out of many we are going to perform the demultiplexing operation that is going to be done with the help of the selection line so here as i said in order to demultiplex or in order to decide whether these lines are acting as the address lines or the data lines that is going to be done with the help of the ale when the ale is equal to the one these lines are acting as a address lines 
when the ALE equals to the zero, then these lines are acting as a data lines. Now the question comes that at what time the ALE is going to be one is a question. So as I differentiated, we have the T0 time now. During the T0 time, during the T0 time, ALE equals to the one. And once the T0 time is over, from the T1 to T3, ALE status is equal to the zero. During the T0 time, ALE equals to the one. After T0, T1 to T3, ALE equals to the zero. Means during the first clock cycle of your mission cycle, during the first clock cycle of your mission cycle, these lines are acting as an address lines. Whatever the multiplex lines we are having, those are acting as the address lines. Okay. So after the T0 time, these lines are acting as a data lines. Why they are acting as a data lines? Because L is immediately make, uh, made as a means it is going to become the zero. After the T0, the L is going, status is going to be the zero. When the L status equals to the zero, then the multiplex address lines are acting as a multiplex lines are acting as a data lines. Multiplex lines are acting as a data lines. Okay. Now. So L is nothing but address latch enable pin, which is used for demultiplexing the multiplexed address and data lines. Demultiplexing the multiplexed address and the data lines, as well as we have the few more multiplex lines we will see as we move on. Okay. So this is about the address lines. Means 8086 microprocessor, 8086 microprocessor is having the 16-bit data bus, as we know. Okay, it is having the 16-bit data bus, which is nothing but AD0 to AD15. Means these lines are acting as a in short, in simple short, if you want to know that one, these lines are acting as a means when the uh, A sorry, when the ALE is equal to the zero, then AD15 to AD sorry, AD0 acting as a D15 to means data lines. I'll take uh, one thing as sorry, acting as mm, I'll take the color red, acting as D15 to D0 means data lines. If the AL equals to the one, if the AL equals to the one. equals to the 1 then ad15 to ad0 acting as a address lines okay means they are acting as a, a15 to a15 to a0 lines 16 address lines we are required uh, we are expecting that 8086 microprocessor is a 20 bit address bus now remaining four we are going to see that one okay so just remember that these lines are acting as a 16 bit data lines as well as 16 bit address lines that is going to be differentiated with the help of the ALE pin address latch enable pin address latch enable pin okay now. so multiplex means it is just like a two cross one multiplexer we are having the selection line with the help of the selection line we are going to choose one input out of many inputs from the multiplexer case okay now. so the next thing is uh, let's go to the next pin explanation okay now, as we have seen the explanation okay if you want uh, you just pass it and uh, note down the information okay so here i took the t0 to t3 i took the t0 to t3 sorry excuse me anna class record just me undi undi ha sorry me so pass the video and uh, note down the information which is there on the screen okay now so here uh, don't get confused over here i took the t0 to t3 uh, with the zero terminology but uh, they have taken the t1 to t4 uh, okay now so that is a different one so you, you just uh, make now t0 to t um, what i took uh, five cycles they have taken Okay, now I took the four uh, four cycles. Actually, four cycles only. One is a halt cycle. That is a different one. I'm not considering that. So two uh, T zero to T three. I took the zero suffix. They took the T one. So if you are uh, getting confused, you can skip this slide. Okay, now no problem at all. Okay. So the next one is a uh, address lines. We have seen the data lines. We have seen the address and the data lines. Let us go for pure address lines. Pure address lines means 
20 bit address bus is there na which is nothing but a02 a02 a19 remember ma from here onwards uh, the naming convention of a particular signal if we are having the multiple signals like uh, address lines and the data lines they are starting with the d0 they are starting with the d0 if at all it is a data line and uh, uh, a0 if at all it is a address line okay no? so total how many address lines are there 20 address lines are there they are starting from a0 to a19 what is the use of the address line what is the use of the address line <coughs> to drive the addresses as we are seeing on the screen they are the output lines they are the output lines means address is always generated by the 8086 microprocessor and it is transmitted by the 8086 microprocessor using the address bus okay now it is not accepting anything uh, as an address from the other devices okay so it is a 8086 microprocessor address bus okay now but uh, what you do is uh, i'll go back to my actual diagram over here because uh, some of the signals are missing on the uh, last slide so here ad02 ad02 starting with the ad02 oops starting with the ad02 ad14 and ad15 to a19 ad15 to a19 these are the multiplex lines these are the multiplex lines okay so when uh, in order to demultiplex them we are having one pin called as a alien add a slash enable pin add a slash enable pin when the al is equals to the zero when the al equals to the zero these lines are acting as a data lines from ad0 to ad15 they are acting as a data lines from a16 to a19 from a16 to a19 a16 to a19 uh, these lines are acting as a status lines we will see the status lines explanation also don't worry about it s3 s4 s5 s6 okay so when the al equals to the zero when the al equals to the zero ad0 to ad15 are acting as a data lines like d0 to d15 and uh, a16 to a19 are acting as a status lines like s3 to s6 okay they are acting as a status lines so we will see the status lines explanation also don't worry about it okay so here uh, this is the actual diagram uh, in the last slide we missed out that okay so address lines yeah Address lines total 20 bit address bus is there and we know that how much memory it is going to be accessed which is going to be the 2 per 20 so from that we are calculating the one megabyte uh, one megabyte of memory location okay so the next case is yeah uh, let's go for the status lines so as we are uh, missing this one so i'll go back to again over here i'll explain that status lines also so here we are having the status lines s3 to s6 na? status lines s3 to s6 okay we'll come to that explanation status lines explanation yeah okay status lines are there na? so a19 is acting as a address line if it is not address line means if the l equals to the zero then it is acting as a status line six if the l equals to zero acting as a status lines five four three okay na? so now let's go for what exactly the status lines okay now what exactly the status lines uh, what kind of status they are showing so how many status lines are there in the multiplexed case we are having the four status lines one is a s6 another one is a s5 another one is a s4 another one is a s3 when the al equals to the when the al equals to the zero sorry when the al equals to the zero these lines are acting as a status lines. these lines are acting as a status lines okay now what exactly the s6 intention what exactly the s6 is showing is a question status lines means what kind of operation is presently going on inside the microprocessor in order to read the present operation which is going inside the microprocessor we are going to make use of the status lines to check it out what kind of operation is going on and what kind of uh, 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 conditions are there inside the 806 microprocessor we are going to read out the entire status of the uh, microprocessor with the help of the status signals okay now with the help of the status signal so s6 is indicating for what is the use of the s6 s6 is indicating whether the system bus system bus means whatever the uh, ad0 to ad15 and uh, uh, a16 to means ad0 to a15 and a16 into a19 are there na that bus is called as a system bus okay na that bus is called as a system bus sometimes if you are going more detail then we are going to call uh, one naming convention called as a local bus 
we are going to co use one naming convention called as a local bus if you are getting confused with the system bus and the local bus forget about the local bus just consider the system bus because when you are go through the textbook you will come across the system bus section of uh, word only okay now system bus means whatever the address lines and the data lines which are there in the 8086 microprocessor they are called as a system bus they are called as a uh, system buses address bus and the data bus are called as a system buses okay now. so here in general in general every time the microprocessor is having the control over the system buses means the microprocessor is having the control over the address bus microprocessor is having the control over over the data bus means which is going to be those buses are going to be controlled by the microprocessor only in general but here are somewhere there is a requirement in such a way that we are supposed to means the microprocessor supposed to leave the control over the system bus or transfer the control over the system bus to the some other parameter transfer the control over the system bus to the some other parameter okay now transfer the control over the system bus to the some other parameter okay now, what kind of parameter that one okay what kind of parameter so let us suppose i am taking the during the initial class of the microcomputer i would have explained this point but i don't know how many of you realize it, this concept and remember this concept i don't know but let me take this one okay so here i'm having the uh, some explanation okay uh, inside the memory okay so i'm going to take this one as an mp microprocessor mm. I'm going to take this one as a RAM. Sorry. Mm -hmm. RAM. Oh. Just consider this part. This part as a RAM. RAM. And this one as a hard disk. I'm just taking this one as a hard disk. It is last P. H slash T hard disk and uh, I'm going to take the DMU uh, one thing called as a DMU direct memory access direct memory access okay so as I said when a bulk amount of data okay now so as I said that um, in the during the microcomputer microcomputer explanation uh, I told you one point that the microprocessor is one which is always perform which is always taking the responsibility to perform a particular operation let us suppose there is a bulk amount of data means huge amount of data need to be exchanged between the ram memory and the hard disk sorry between the ram memory and the hard disk there is a bulk amount of data need to be exchanged between the ram memory and hard disk if you are allowing the microprocessor to involve if you are allowing the microprocessor to involve for this kind of operation means uh, read the information from the RAM to the hard disk, which is a bulk amount. Bulk amount means let us suppose it is a 500 MB. My requirement is I am expecting that 500 MB data should be 500 MB data should be exchanged between the RAM and the hard disk. Between the RAM and the hard disk, we have the some other components also. If you want, you can take the uh, pen drive also. If you want, you can take the pen drive also. Pen drive is also taking the uh, secondary storage device now. Okay, now let me take the pen drive over here. So it is a pen drive, ma. I'm just taking the P for this one. Okay. So it is a pen drive. Oops. No, don't take over here. If you take this one, and then you get confused. Uh, okay. Pen drive. Okay. Let me take P over here. It's a pen drive. It is a pen drive. Okay. Now, so whether either you may need to exchange a bulk amount of data like a 500 mb data between the ram and hard disk or from the hard disk into the pen drive i would like to send the data from the um, what uh, secondary storage device into the pen drive peripheral device which is a uh, uh, usb okay now. so i would like to exchange the data between the these two or between these two if you are allowing my microprocessor how much of data we are supposed to exchange 500 mb if you are allowing my microprocessor 8086 microprocessor to perform this operation as i said the microprocessor is the one which is going to be the supreme 
in the system. Microprocessor is the one which is going to be the supreme in the system and it takes the responsibility to perform any kind of operation. But when you are allowing the microprocessor to perform this uh, data exchange operation between the RAM and the hard disk or between the hard disk and the pen drive, hard disk and the pen drive, in how much uh, means in which format the data is going to be exchanged if you are allowing the 8086 microprocessor, if you are allowing the, sorry, if you are allowing the 8086 microprocessor, if you are allowing the 8086 microprocessor to perform the data read write operation. How it is going to be performed the data read write operation? It is going to be performing the data read data operation in the 16 bit format. It is in the 16 bit format. 16 bit means why it is in the 16 bit format? Because the data bus, maximum data size data bus, which is going to be supported by the 8086 microprocessor, is the 16 bit format. 16 bit format. Okay. 16 bit means how many bytes are there? At every time it is going to be the two bytes of information is going to be exchanged. Every time two bytes of information is going to be read, read, read. From RAM to hard disk or hard disk to the pen. So every time two bytes, two bytes means it is going to be takes more time. Two bytes of information is going to be the uh, it means microprocessor is taking the more time to exchange the data between the devices. If at all it is a 500 MB, how much time it is going to be take? Lots of time because the data bus because of the restriction with the helper uh, uh, which is there in the microprocessor is a data bus size which is a 16 bit one which is a 16 bit one. In order to exchange the 500 MB data, then definitely microprocessor is going to take some more time. So at that time means when a bulk amount of data need to be exchanged between the memory and the peripheral devices and the, between the peripheral devices, uh, as I said, every time it is going to be done by the RAM only, but I am not considering that explanation. We have the elaborated explanation for that. So here, uh, I'm sorry, ma, I'm going to continue the session. Uh,